straight from the underworld, coming for the underground. Hey guys, welcome to Legendary Savage Gamer here. I hope you guys are having a splendid day. Hopefully you guys did not click on this video by accident. And no, this video is not clickbait. I am going to be teaching you guys how to get Sony PlayStation 2, Nintendo 3DS, and GameCube working in one whole video. Because I posted the last two videos of Nintendo GameCube and PlayStation 2. And through a lot of your comment feeds, I have seen that everyone is having issues on how to get the PlayStation 2 up and running in the GameCube, that it's not finding the games, or it's not finding the core, or the PlayStation 2 is just crashing or not loading properly. And in this video, I am going to explain to the T, the best I can, of my abilities of how to get everything working. So the reason why you guys are in this video is pretty much the main reason is to get Nintendo 3DS working on RetroArch because I had plenty of comments of people asking, does 3DS work on RetroArch? And the short answer is yes, yes it does. And it works fine and smooth and perfectly, as you can see. And I'm going to show you also that the GameCube Nintendo GameCube works flawlessly, perfectly fine, no issues. Like, as you can see, Nintendo GameCube, The Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker is running smooth, perfectly. Look at that. Now, one more before I end this uh, intro. There's one more. And the Legacy of Kane Blood Omen 2 for the PlayStation 2. So if this is what you guys are wanting to do, and this is what you guys want, then you clicked on the right video. And like I said, this is not clickbait. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video, and I hope this video will help you. And if it does, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe. It really will help my channel out. But if you guys are still having issues, please please leave a comment. I will reply to the best I can. I hope you guys don't have any issues because as you see, everything's working perfectly fine for me. So I'm hoping everything will work for you. But like I said, I'm going to explain everything to the best of my abilities of how to do this stuff. And there's not much I can say except, well, let's get into this video. And if this is what you guys are wanting, then like I said, you came to the right spot. All right, well, let's get the uh, sort of hard part out of the way. First things first, let's go to, if it's under, yours it might be under C drive. Mine's under external. So, like I said, first things first, let's get a little bit of the hard stuff out of the way. What you want to do is go to Steam. Then you want to go to Steam Apps, Common. And then you want to go to RetroArch. And then what you want to do is create a new folder. You go up here, click the folder option, click new folder, or you could do it this way. Click the right side of your mouse and go to new and hit folder. However you guys want to do it. And what you want to do is make a folder called ROMS, R-O-M-S, all capital. Once that is completed, then you want to open up that folder. And then you want to make four, uh, three more folders or as many more folders as you want. But right now, we're just doing Nintendo 3DS, GameCube, and Sony PlayStation 2. And pretty much what you want to do is create new folders, and you want to name them just like this, all caps. Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo GameCube, Sony PlayStation 2. All right, once you guys are done with that, you want to go back to RetroArch, the main directory of RetroArch. And you may have the system folder, and you may have the core folders. If not, then that's okay but even if you do still have them it's still okay I'm going to give you guys the link to my system and my cores but first you need WinRAR or 7-zip whatever you guys prefer I prefer 7-zip once you downloaded what you prefer then you'll be able to continue to the next step alright so after you open up the link from the description 
here is my system pack. You download this. This is all the systems and the emulators and everything all in order the way it's supposed to be. And you download that. And then after you're done downloading that, then you do the same thing. You go to my link in my description and then you click on my course pack. And you hit download and everything will be all updated. All the cores are updated and in order. So once you're done with that, then we can move on to the next step. Hey, just putting that out there, a recap. You guys may be like, hey, you missed a step. Um, I did not miss a step. I'm just letting you guys know that I will not show you guys how to get games. But if you guys got your games, cool, pow more power to you. But anyways, put your Nintendo 3DS games in here, your GameCube games in here, your Sony PlayStation 2 games in here. And then we'll be able to move on to the next step. All right, so the next step will bring you here to downloads where you'll see two folders, system and cores. They're not in here because I'm not gonna re-download them all again because it's gonna take a while. And I already have them, they're mine. So after you guys are done extracting them, then you wanna open up one by one. So you wanna open up cores and then inside the cores, there should be another folder called cores. Then you wanna extract that. When you are done extracting that, then you wanna go back out to the main downloads. Then you wanna open up system and then you wanna extract system. And then what you wanna do from there after that is you wanna copy, you hit copy on system and then you wanna come here to the main RetroArch folder, and then you wanna click your right side of your mouse, and you hit paste. And then it will paste the system folder right here. Then you wanna do the same thing, go back to downloads. After you're done going back to downloads, open up cores, then inside the cores should be a cores folder. Click on that folder and hit copy or cut your choice. Then come back here on RetroArch, the main directory, and you wanna paste. And then when it pastes, it may say replace or it may not. But once you hit replace, then your cores will be right here. And when you open up the cores folder, if you did everything correctly, when you open up cores, it should look like this. Same with system. If you open up system, if you did it correctly, it should look like this. If everything looks correctly the way it's supposed to, then you are ready to move on to the next step. All right, here's the next step. What you guys wanna do is turn your controller on and connect it back to your PC. And then you wanna start up RetroArch, or Arc, however you wanna pronounce it. And as you guys can see, once the Xbox 360 stuff disappears, but as you guys can see, my playlist is gone, so I can show you guys how to get them back there the right way. But anyways, for starters, let's go to Drivers and change your video to whatever you preference for your graphics card. I preference Vulkan because it runs smooth and it's clear. But not all games run Vulkan very well, but for me, it runs perfectly smooth to me because I have a brand new graphics card and it just, it just depends on your guys' machine. But anyways, I choose Vulkan, so go to Vulkan. Then after you're done with Vulkan, then you want to go to video, then go to output, make sure everything is set. My, my resolution is a 4K, so if yours might be 1080 by uh, 1920 by 1080, leave it at that. This is the graphics card. Then go to full mode, leave it how it is. Go to window mode, leave it how it is. Go to scaling, turn integer scaling on. Then after you're done with that, then you want to go to input, then scroll all the way down until you see hotkeys. Then you want to go to menu toggle controller combo and turn it to L3 R3 or whatever else you guys prefer. I prefer L3 R3. And then once you are done with that, go back to main menu, go to configuration file, and then hit save con current config. And then after that, then you go down to import content. I learned all this from Arcade Games. I will be sure to leave him a link in the description. I learned how to do all this RetroArch stuff from him. 
to do this the easy way and smooth way because it's literally the easiest way for someone like me with OCD. And he does all this stuff for Xbox Series X and Series S on dev and retail mode. So I learned how to do all this from him. So shout out to Arcades Games. But anyways, what you want to do is go to Manual Scan, go to Content Directory, then go to your D drive, wherever your games are. Then you want to go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, RetroArch, go to ROMs, and then go to Nintendo 3DS, scan this directory. Then you want to go to System Name and look for a Nintendo 3DS. Then you want to go to Default Core and look for Citra. I never used Citra 2018, but if you guys want to try it, see how it works. But I have always used Citra, and it works perfectly fine for me. And after you do that, hit Start Scan. Then you want to go back all the way to the top, go down to Nintendo GameCube or whatever games you have your other folders are next. But for me, it is Nintendo GameCube. Scan the directory. Same, go back here. Go to system name, look for Nintendo GameCube. And then you want to scroll down until you see Dolphin. Dolphin is a Nintendo Wii U GameCube emulator. So if you have Wii games, you can do Wii games as well. All right, now do the same thing. Sony PlayStation 2. Scan a directory, system name, scroll all the way down until you see Sony PlayStation 2. Default core, scroll all the way down until you see PCSX2 LibRetro.dll. And then go all the way down and hit start scan. And that's it. And then you want to go back, go back one more time, and then go all the way down to GameCube or Nintendo 3DS or PlayStation 2, your preference. And if you guys do not have thumbnails, as you see, not all games work with thumbnails. I don't know why. Not all of them do. But if you guys do not have thumbnails, literally just click on the game and go to download thumbnails and it will pop up. That's how you get your thumbnails. But no thumbnails work on here that I've noticed so far. You can do it. You can, per you can put your personal thumbnails of how you, do how you want. You just got to look up Arcade's Games the one that I gave a shout out to, and he will show you how to step by step, how to do it. And I, I just never really cared to do it because I, I don't care to do it. But anyways, that's literally, that's it. That's how you get the GameCube, Nintendo 3DS, and PlayStation 2 to work. As long as you followed this step tutorial all the way through, everything is working. And just like before, just start up the game, hit run, and that that's it. That's literally that's 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 it. Literally, that's that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button and please. For the love of God, leave a comment if anything goes wrong. I hope nothing goes wrong because this video explained everything to the T as best as I could and as fast as I could. So I'm sorry for the last two tutorials because, like I said, it was my first time doing it, learning how to do tutorials. And when RetroArch was first released on Steam, I was the first one to jump on the PlayStation 2 emulator because everybody was wanting to get the PlayStation 2 emulator on the Xbox Series S and Series X. And I was one of those people. And I learned how to do it from him, so I kind of figured, hmm, what if I can get RetroArch on Steam with the PlayStation 2 emulator? And here you guys are today. And like I said before, I really appreciate you guys' support. And just keep smashing that like button and please keep smashing that subscribe button and be sure to share my video around. But I would let this video play through, but I have the game audio muted so you guys can hear me. So I'll just play this, let this game play a little bit and have music playing. So I'm just going to let you guys enjoy the little bit of gameplay. 
that is on RetroArch. And you guys have a great day. Thank you and God bless.